Good morning, friends. This is Alan Victor Alpha 3, Bravo Hotel Yankee. Today's video is version 3 of my antenna build for small backyards using a 71 feet random wire antenna with a 9 to 1 Anan and 1 to 1 Balan. The wire I used for this antenna project was a speaker wire gauge 22. The changes I made on this video are the following. I lifted the antenna wire off the gazebo roof. I added wood poles in two places. I added a counterweight to minimize wire sagging. And at the end of this video, I will show the new SWR results after the lift. So. Let's begin! I will start at the grounding rod. I connected a ground wire from the grounding rod to the lightning arrester. The lightning arrester is connected in series between the coax feed to the my radio shock in the basement and the transformer box. An RG8X patch cord with PL259 male on each end connects the lightning arrester to the transformer box. This transformer white box houses the 9 to 1 an an and the 1 to 1 Balan transformers. There are two wing nuts on this box. The one on the right is connected to the antenna radiating element. The other is connected to the counterpoise wire. Here is a closer look of the major components of this antenna system. I waterproof the lightning arrester connectors by wrapping the connectors with a self-fusing tape. The self-fusing tape is not UV protected, so I added UV protection by wrapping the self-fusing tape with an electrical tape. I used cable ties so the electrical tape would not unravel in the future. Let's follow the radiating element. I staple the wire to the fence board to relieve pressure between the connector and the antenna wire itself. Now. Let's follow this wire as it rises up to the top of this pole. This wood pole is a 2 by 2 by 8 feet pressure treated lumber. I will call this pole number 1. On the top of this pole number 1, I installed a carabiner to support and guide the wire to the next post by the gazebo located at the middle of the garden. Here is the gazebo at the middle of my garden. We can clearly see another 2x2x8 wood pole attached to one of the gazebo columns. I will call this pole number 2. Pole number 2 lifted the antenna about 16 feet off the ground or 6 feet off the gazebo roof. This is the top of the wood pole number 2. I installed a carabiner and an insulator. The wire now goes through the insulator and continues to pole number 3 at the other side of the fence. The insulator was a piece of plastic chopping board I bought from Walmart. This is a closer look at the top of wood pole number 2. We can see a carabiner and an insulator supporting the antenna and routing it to the pole number 3. We are now looking at wood pole number 3 by the other side of the fence. It is also a 2 by 2 by 8 wooden pole. This pole is attached to the fence post using 3 inches deck screws and washers. The same method as pole number 2 I installed a carabiner and insulator to lift and support and guide 
the wire antenna to the other fence post. We are now at the end of the antenna wire. It is routed to a carabiner and an insulator. Finally, at the end of this wire, I added a counterweight to prevent sagging. This is the close-up shot of the counterweight, what it is made of and how it was attached to the antenna wire. You can see another DIY insulator here made out of plastic cutting board. This is now the video of the whole antenna project. We start at the base, follow the antenna wire as it rises to the wooden pole number one. It goes through the carabiner for support, then continues to pole number two by the gazebo. Through an insulator, it continues to pole number 3 by the fence post. It then slopes down to the next fence post. through another carabiner, then goes down to the counterweight. This is the 71 feet counterpoise. No changes were made on this part of the antenna system. The counterpoise was stapled along the base of the fence until it reaches the end around there. Here are the SWR results using a nano VNA. I marked the 2.5 SWR level because this is the level my FT710 and my G90 can easily tune with their built-in antenna tuners. I tested both radios to see if their built-in antenna tuning units can tune SWR higher than 2.5, and yes they can. Here is the SWR test results using a nano VNA and this time I placed markers to indicate the SWR readings on specific frequencies I use daily. And finally. This is the SWR and impedance test results using a nano VNA. I placed markers to indicate SWR and impedance on specific frequencies. This antenna is very useful to me. It is a multiband antenna and meets all my HF needs. I hope this video inspires you to make your own backyard antenna even if you have a small backyard like mine. Remember that the antenna you build is 100% better than the one that is still in your head. This is Alan of VA3BHY saying 73 to all of you. Until the next video. Bye!